Unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish my other big projects on time for this weekend, so I thought I'd show you something really cool I already did quite a while back. I'll be walking you through the whole process of the topology optimization of a filament holder in Fusion 360, all the way from the definition of the design space, the boundaries, the optimization itself, and then the design process on the basis of the optimization result. Guten Tag everybody! I'm Stefan and welcome to CNC Kitchen. As an introduction, just some basics on topology optimization. Topology optimization is a numerical optimization method to calculate the most optimal material distribution in a design space for a given set of boundary conditions. Even though it is often advertised differently, in 99% of the cases this method will give you a result that needs to be converted into a proper design by hand, especially in the regions where your boundary conditions were. Even though it is simple to start with this method, it will take you years to master the skill. In this rather trivial example, I'll be showing you the basics of topology optimization in Fusion 360 that comes with a very rudimentary module for that. If you want to dig deeper into this topic, take a look at other, more advanced tools like Altair Optistruct, Tosca or Autodesk's new generative design tool. We'll be optimizing the shape of a filament holder that you can use to store your rolls of material on your wall and even to print from. Okay, so let's start with the creation of our design space. Uh, let's show the origin and create uh, the sketch on the XY plane. So let's create a rectangle um, and I'll select the XY plane. I will only be sketching half of our design space because this will save me some trouble in uh, adding dimensions later uh, and we can just use the mirror tool in the end to create a full design space out of that. The whole design space will be 200 millimeters by 160 millimeters. So if I sketch it, I will um, size it with 100 millimeters in the Y axis. And by pushing the D button, I will create another dimension for the X axis or for the X direction. And this will be 160 millimeters. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll cut out the part where the bolt later will be. So where we will uh, bolt our holder, holder to the wall. So this cutout will be 20 millimeters high. And since we want to have 10 millimeters left for the section where we bolted to the wall, um, we need 150 millimeters in length right here. So let's exit the sketch, go on create <coughs> extrude, and we'll extrude our uh, sketch by 20 millimeters. Okay. So the next thing will be, we'll create a hole right here. Um, this will be the hole where the screw goes through when we uh, bolt it to the wall. So I create a circle on this plane by just hitting C and selecting that sketch. It will automatically find the center of this plane and I'll dimension it to be eight millimeters. Okay, close the sketch again. Um, instead of clicking create and extrude, you can also use the hotkey E just uh, like I'm doing it right now. Select the sketch and extrude it that we have a hole. Okay, so then we also need the hole right here where the one inch wood bar will go, which is holding the filament. So again, I hit the C button, I click on that surface right here. I just roughly sketch a circle with um, a diameter of 25 millimeters. And I will dimension the distance from the origin to the center of the circle with 140 millimeters. Uh, this will give us enough distance for this roll of filament to not touch the wall and there is still some material remaining on this side right here 
um, that we have enough rigidity. So stop the sketch again, hit the E button, select this part of the sketch, extrude it downwards that we have a hole. And this is half of our design space. So in order to create the whole design space, um, we will mirror this side. And this is quite easy, just go and create, mirror. What we want to mirror is a whole body. So I select the body at first and the mirror plane will be this surface right here. And we can already see the preview of um, the other half that will be created. Nice. Okay, so what we will need to do is to create a slot right here um, that we are able to insert the bar which is holding the filament later. Um, and I'll be doing that by just creating another sketch right here on the top. So I hit R which um, opens the rectangle tool. I select the upper plane, select the corner right here and just roughly sketch the slot we want to do. Now it automatically already snapped to like the edge of the circle right here, which is more or less exactly what I want. So this is, this is fine. So I stop the sketch again. I hit E for the extrude command and we will extrude this uh, section all the way down. So, okay. And this looks already pretty nice. The only thing which is now just still remaining is that we still have two bodies. Um, so the mirror operation, it created another body, but it didn't like um, combine them together. So this is one thing we need to do before we do the topology optimization. So I select uh, modify, I select combine, I select the two parts and just hit okay. And you can already see that the two bodies we have before now merged into one body. Okay. So this is our design space. So now we can change to the topology optimization uh, tool. So go on model, select simulation. And now we can create a new study. So the study we want to do at the moment <clears throat> is a shape optimization. So I select it right here, say create new study. And this is now giving me lots of other tools, as you can see right here. So, um, for topology optimization, we need to create a finite element model. And a finite element model is always consisting of finite elements. So this is the mesh of the model, which um, represents the shape of our part and cuts it down into small pieces, which can then be mathematically be described. And we can do a numerical simulation with these, with these elements. The other thing we need are our boundary conditions. So we will be bolting this holder later to the wall. So we will fix it at this location and at the, this location to the wall. So this is a constraint. So I select the constraint tool. I select the upper hole and I hit okay. So on the other side, we'll also create a constraint by selecting the cylinder. And I do a slight variation on this side because I want to have my model kind of statically determined. So I uncheck the constraint in the Y direction. So we have fixed our model right here on the one side. So what we need to do now is we need to add the loads to our model. So I will just select the loads tool select the surface where um, our wood bar will later lie and just transmit the forces from the weight of our filament spools to our holder. Um, this blue arrow we can see right here is representing the load direction and it's automatically orientated in the right direction. I will add a load of like 100 newtons. So 100 newtons is like 10 kilograms. So okay, so we are almost all set. So one of the last things we need to do is we need to distinguish the regions where um, the optimization algorithm can get rid of material and at which locations it should not get rid of material. So the region where the optimization algorithm usually shouldn't play around are the locations where we have our constraints and where we add the load. In order to do that, we can use this preserve region tool. So I'll just select it. 
I'll select the first cylinder. And just by dragging the arrow right here, we can define the size of the region, which is untouched by the optimization algorithm. So this looks fine. Let's go on the other side. Again, preserve region, select the cylinder, uh, make this a little bigger. And the last region is the location where we have been applying the load. So again, select half of the cylinder and drag this a little bit bigger, um, just up to the size where you think, okay, this is like a realistic amount of material I later still want to have at this location. Now hit okay. So we have basically now set up most of our model. The thing which is um, still necessary to do is to create the finite element mesh. The meshing is breaking down our model into parts which can then be mathematically described so we can do the numerical analysis. We can preview the default mesh by just hitting solve and say generate mesh. Uh, this just takes a second and it will then show us right here um, the finite elements that have been created. For such a model this mesh might be okay to do a really rough analysis but uh, if you want to get a finer result, it is quite important to refine the mesh of our model a little bit. In order to refine the mesh, go on Manage and Settings. And under Mesh, we can now adjust the size of these elements by either just dragging this slider right here, or go on Absolute Size and just put a number in here and um, for such a model, I think three millimeters is a quite decent, a quite decent size. So I have hit OK. I go and generate mesh again. This will now redo the mesh. And after a couple of seconds, we will have a preview of the mesh again. This looks quite nice and is quite fine. Um, just always keep in mind that don't use too many elements because the more elements you have, the longer the optimization will take. So as I have already said before, with topology optimization, the optimization algorithm will try to put material in the places where it is really needed and will get rid of the material where it is not needed. Usually for topology optimization, we have shape optimization criteria, which means in here we have the objective of our simulation. And for topology optimization, usually the target is to maximize the stiffness and we don't want to use more than like 30% material right here. The amount of material is always depending on uh, the target weight you are wanting to get. And this is always a percentage of the volume of your design space. 30% in such a model seems to be okay. So I'll just accept that, take a look at the results, and then we can later even decrease the number or increase it again, depending on the result you're getting from the optimization. In order to start the optimization run, hit solve and select solve again. So just hit solve study. And now your simulation is being uploaded. And this status bar will show you the progress of your topology optimization. As I said before, the time you will need for the solution run is depending on the availability of the servers, probably at Autodesk, and also the size of your problem. The more elements you need, the more complicated your part is, the longer it will take. For such a part, usually like 10, 15, 30 minutes uh, is something you can expect. If you only want to get a rough idea about the load distribution in your part, you can use a causal mesh. And then these simulation runs are usually done like after five minutes. And this is really nice. So I'll leave this running now and we'll get back as soon as the simulation is finished. Okay, so now probably 20 minutes later, we have our result. So let's close this up and let's take a look at it. So what we can see now is the material distribution that the algorithm has been calculating. By moving the slider right here on the right side, we can also take a look at the other regions. So blue represents the areas where uh, no material is needed at all. And red is representing the areas where we really need material. 
You can use the slider to adjust a little bit what you really want to then later export back into the modeling environment to create your design out of. I have also been running the simulation with a couple of other mass targets. And these are the results. The result you see right here is not a real geometry as you know it from the normal design process. This right here is only a surface model which could in theory be exported as an STL and printed just as it is but I wouldn't recommend to anybody to do that. Okay, so let's promote our results. So we want to add the model to our modeling workspace. So just hit okay, give it a second. And we are back in the modeling workspace and we can see that now we have our topology optimization result in the background, uh, which we can use like as a blueprint to create our design. So I'll just hide our uh, design space now because we don't need this now. And I will be using this right here as a background to create a new design. So I will start by selecting the plane right here and go into the sketch environment. What I'll be doing at first, I will roughly sketch our interfaces. So this is the location where our bar later will be. So I've just uh, sketched a circle. I'll dimension it with uh, 25 millimeters. I will put it at the location where it already was before. Okay, so let's sketch the part where it's bolted to the wall. This needs to lie on the origin. I want this to be 10 millimeters wide. It's all in all 200 millimeters long. Let's sketch a symmetry line and make this symmetric to the origin. So I will use the spline tool to do a really nicely looking outline of our part, just like that. If you don't like a part, you can always uh, drag the points around to get it into the desired shape. If you are not happy with the angles of your spline, just select the spline and drag the blue points down here. and stop the sketch. Okay, so I will just be using the extrude tool again, select these parts of the sketch and extrude it by 20 millimeters. Okay, nice. Um, so the only thing which is now missing is this small truss we see right here. So I create another sketch on this plane. Okay, stop the sketch and extrude this again. So we still need to add the holes right here for our screws. Stop the sketch, extrude both of these sketches. So what we don't want to have is that our bar, which is holding the filament, just slides out of one side. 
So I will close up the slot right here in the back just a little bit that we have a barrier that this is not able to slide out. So let's create another sketch on this surface, select this point and select this point. And we also want to use this line right here. We can use this line by just uh, using the uh, project op operation. Hit OK. And we have a, s a closed sketch again. Now I'll just extrude this by, yeah, two millimeters should be fine. Okay. And to finish everything up, let's just create a couple of fillets. Okay, perfect. I think there we have it. So if we overlay our design with the topology optimization, you can see that we really nicely um, were able to sketch the result as it was suggested. And this is now ready for printing. You would now be able to do a finite element analysis of your finished design but most of the time, if you're using FDM 3D printing, the simulation you can find in here doesn't really make a lot of sense because the simulation will assume that you have a fully dense part. And since we will only be using a couple of shells on the outside and not a lot of infill on the inside, the simulation results might be quite a bit off. So let's just save it. And export it as an STL. So I have opened the model in Slick 3R Prusa Edition. I will be increasing the number of shells to 3 to give it a little bit more frigidity, but at the same time reduce the infill a little bit that we save on some filament. Let's take a look at the preview. And this does look kind of nice. Since I have Octoprint running on my Prusa, I can now simply send the G-code by the click of one button to my Prusa. So there you have it. This was a short introduction on topology optimization in Fusion 360. Please let me know if you liked it by leaving a thumbs up and post your ideas in the comments. If you want to see more of this, then subscribe to the channel and consider supporting me on Patreon. Thanks for watching, auf Wiedersehen and until next time.